Good morning, Calvary. Great to see you here this morning. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day. Wherever you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, we're glad to have you tuning in. I've got a question for you. Do you have something looming on the horizon that's causing stress or anxiety? Maybe it's a decision that needs to be made, a conversation you need to have, an action you need to take, a situation that needs to be dealt with, but you're worried it won't turn out well. It's so easy to let these things paralyze us and keep us from moving forward and operating in a healthy way. In today's section of Genesis, we're looking at a moment where Jacob was plagued by worry and anxiety. See, Jacob was on his way to head back to Canaan and reunite with his family. And like any good dysfunctional family, that alone caused some worry for Jacob. But more specifically, Jacob was in fear of his twin brother Esau. And for good reason. If you look back at chapter 27, we see the story of Jacob stealing the patriarchal blessing of Isaac from his brother Esau. It was bad. Jacob dressed up and acted like his brother to fool their dad into passing on that fatherly blessing to him, even though it was due to Esau. As you may remember and expect, this enraged Esau so much that he promises in verse 42 to kill Jacob uh, after their father had passed. Now, it was many decades later and Jacob is worried that his brother will finally make good on that promise. I won't spoil you the details of their meeting because I'll be able to share what happens when they reunite on Tuesday. But I do want to focus on what Jacob does in anticipation of this moment because I think it can be helpful for us. So I want to read verses 6 through 12 here of Genesis 32. Uh, and as I do that, I want you to hear what Jacob does in preparation for this moment. And it says, And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and of God my father Isaac, O Lord, you said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred that I may do you good. I'm not worthy of the least of all of these deeds of steadfast love and of all the faithfulness that you've shown to your servant. For with my only staff I crossed this Jordan and now I have become two camps. Please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he may come and attack me, the mothers and with the children. But you said, Lord, I will surely do you good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So Jacob has some tactical strategy that he employs. He splits up his men. He gets ready for a possible attack. But then notice what he did there. He prayed. He went to God and he prayed about his situation. Specifically, he humbled himself before God and he confessed his own imperfections and unworthiness. Then he prayed for deliverance. He acknowledged that he needed God's help to get out of this bad situation. Then he acknowledged his own fear and anxiety. He told God about it and shared why he was afraid. And then finally, he rehearsed God's own promises and statements back to him. He prayed to God and said, You said that I will surely do you good and multiply your family. I share this with you because I think this is a wonderful template for us to use to guide us through moments of worry or stress or fear or anxiety. See, Philippians 4 tells us to take our anxiety to God in prayer, and I think this prayer of Jacob is a great example for us. So here's how we break that down. Jacob models first to, to humble ourselves, that, that we go to God and we humble ourselves and confess our sins, our shortcomings before God. He already knows us, but this allows us to, to really reunite and connect with God, to, to, to have nothing hindering the relationship and nothing getting in the way of our prayers. Next, admit that you can't get through the situation on your own and ask for help. And this isn't the prayer of, God, fix the, the situation the way I want, but instead it's a, God, I need you to lead here, so take over and help me through this. Next, call out your fear, your stress, your anxiety, whatever you're feeling, just call it out. There's great power in naming the things that are haunting and affecting you, so call those out before God and name them. And finally, Remind yourself of some of the promises of Scripture. I'm not going to name them all here because there's nearly 7,500 promises that God makes to us as His people in Scripture. So make use of a concordance or a web search to help you find and understand promises uh, about your specific situation. But before you act on that, that situation that's causing worry or grief or stress, stop and pray. Get right before God. Ask for help, share your struggles, and remind yourselves of promises like the fact that God is with you, will never leave you or forsake you. 
Whatever you're facing this week or this coming weekend or even next week, I hope and pray that you approach it with the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Have a great and peaceful day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.